Okay guys, back to two point perspective. This time, just like with one point perspective, thinking about how can we draw these cubes in different um, viewpoints, from different viewpoints, from our imagination, but using our knowledge of the perspective lines. So, uh, some cubes in two point. Um, let's start with just a simple cube. Um, we can do the same thing we did when we were drawing with perspective lines and start on a corner. Let's draw the right side of a cube here. So this is gonna be my right side and it's zooming off. These two lines should be zooming to some point in the distance out this way. Now I don't have to draw where that point is. I just need to know that they're kind of going closer and closer together. So now I'm gonna cap the edge so I have a, little, a right side of my cube. The left side, let's say we're gonna do the same thing but in the opposite direction. So now these two lines are zooming off. Notice I have them coming together. They're coming to a point eventually in the distance. So I'll cap that off somewhere too, making it kind of a long rectangular cube. So now, again, tricky part here. Um, I'm gonna zoom in just while I'm on this one small cube. Um, tricky part would be getting the top right. So what I see all the time people doing is, okay, throwing the top on and you kind of go uphill like this and it looks like a house with a roof, right? The reason is, uh, let's put this here. If this was going at this angle, those two things are going further and further away as we go into the distance. You don't want that. We want the top to be going toward where this line is going. So that means it has to be even shallower an angle than that one. So now that's getting us closer to where we want to be. So see how I kind of lowered that drawbridge to the top of the box. And in the same way over on this side, we want this to be going closer and closer to where this line will be. Maybe around there. And notice how sketchy I'm being with it. I'm never right on the first try, so I have to kind of sketch my way through it. And now I have a pretty decent idea of where I want to be, so I can come back in and lock in my lines a bit more boldly. And for you guys, for this kind of homework or assignment, um, you know, you can be a little on the sketchy side like this too, but notice where it's important and where the corners meet, it's very tight and it's precise and we know what's happening. So that's a pretty accurate, fairly accurate cube. Um, not saying it's perfect, but from our imagination, not too bad. So <clears throat> let's keep running with these ideas and we're gonna build several two point perspective cubes in space. Um, <clears throat> as you do that, uh, change up your sizing a little bit. Don't always keep the cubes exactly the same size. We can blow them up a little bit. We can change the angles really dramatically. So on this one, I'm drawing, I kind of drew in my left side. It's coming downhill here at a distance, but I made my right edge pop up much, much sharper. So we're looking Something like that, not bad. Making sure my vertical is a nice vertical. And key points, I'm making sure that those two lines eventually would meet somewhere way out in the distance and that this one also would meet somewhere out there in the distance as well. They all seem to be like eventually they would converge together, which is a good sign. Um, same with these ones. So if I continued on over to the left, I'm pretty confident that they're getting closer and closer together. Now, in most drawings, we have no way to know if that's really gonna touch at exactly the same point. We can only do our best guesstimate in most of our drawings because nine times out of 10, when you're drawing a still life on the table, the vanishing points of these cubes won't actually exist in your drawing. They would exist somewhere elsewhere, floating around on the outer edges beyond your drawing, which makes it a little bit harder. So we have to get really good at feeling these out and making sure that our lines are coming together closer and closer. All right, nice. Another cube um, that feels pretty accurate. So um, let's try one where it would be closer to our eye level and the top gets really, really compressed. So how can I be sure that that's gonna happen? Uh, well, nine times out of 10, if the top's getting compressed on a cube, let's say this is the front corner, these angles have to be really, really shallow. So notice how this one's steep. That means we're gonna see an awful lot of the top side of our cube. 
over here, if our angles are really shallow, the top will be really compressed. Let's make this one kind of a tall, skinny cube. Now, if this angle is kind of shallow, this one's not going to be really, really steep either. All right, so the tricky part up at the top. Now, if this is zooming off somewhere like here, this has to be getting close to that point eventually. So that has to be even shallower or flatter of an angle. So somewhere in that zone feels pretty good. Uh, if I'm being critical, I might even have to make it a little shallower. Um, and then this one, if we're looking at this sort of an edge here, I know I need to be awfully flat back here too. Because again, eventually I want those to meet somewhere out in the distance. Um, so if you notice, that's starting to give us that really compre compressed kind of small space at the top. So that would be an example of a cube that's getting closer and closer to our eye level. This would be an example of one that's a good bit below our eye level because we can see a lot of the top of it. And remember, when in doubt, start to draw these angles out and imagine what's going to happen with them. Um, it's pretty easy to tell when, when one of these starts to get way, way off. And um, if I started to go in this angle and it's looking too much like they're parallel or it's running away, I know that that, that line is dropping down too far in space. Okay, and then um, last but definitely not least because we don't want to avoid um, this too much would be the ones, uh, the boxes when you're looking uphill at them. So um, something that's kind of lofted on a ceiling, right? So now we're doing the same thing, straight vertical lines, but now we're looking at the bottom side of a box. So they'd be going all of our diagonals. Here we're going uphill. Here we're going to come downward. So those are my two sides to the box, left and right. This looks a little wobbly, but we'll clean that up later. Okay, and now again, this has to come downhill as well, but to the point where it seems like eventually they're gonna come and touch down the road. And right now um, it's doing that. So those lines are getting a little closer to each other as they go in the distance. And if this angle is going this direction, this needs to also be going to a point where they would meet eventually. So I feel pretty confident. Notice my like, they're kind of like X's that I make when I go through, I continue my lines. Um, it's really hard to guesstimate this stuff if you don't continue those lines. So feel free, you know, you don't have to find the actual vanishing point, but continue a few inches beyond your cube and you'll probably find it makes those shapes more accurate in the end. Once again, yeah, feels like those are gonna connect, that's good. And you know, whatever tool works for you, for me, it helps me a lot of times to use some sort of straight edges and I'll use like two pencils. Um, I wanna make sure that this line and this line feel like eventually they're coming together and eventually looks like they would somewhere out here. Um, but you know, whatever, like I said, whatever tool works for you, it might be continuing your angles a little further than what I'm doing. It might be kind of using your pencils to shape these up, but um, on these kind of imagined uh, cubes, I would urge you not to use a ruler and not find the perfect point where these um, uh, fall into the distance because when we're drawing from a still life, it's very rare that you're going to be able to find the, the actual perspective points and do more of like a technical style drawing. We have to do a little bit more of an intuitive drawing based on the knowledge of how this perspective works. Um, so again, populate your drawing with several more cubes just to get a little bit of practice with this.